They made it seem like all the wheels and whistles and all that shit, right? So then, because every car on the lot is already paid for, the dealership, that's why they never do these cars in front of you. They go to the finance manager. Now they're going to shoot your application to everybody. They're going to take the best deal. Interest rate for them, not you. Right? Then the bank is going to be like, so CarMax is going to call Allie. Hello, Allie. I need a loan. What do you need a loan for? We need it for 70000 But the projected amount in which this security interest is going to be worth after so many years and after it matures in nine months, but you're getting interest on it every four weeks and it's going to fully mature in two years. Y'all see how much they're getting paid? Four weeks, that's the coupon. Uh, right? Nine months is the promissory note. Two years of security agreement. Why you think they make you sign so many different things? <laughs> and so we project that after we sell this motherfucker on the goddamn market 10,000 times, that this contract is not going to be worth seven hundred and seven thousand dollars But wait a minute. We are the only people that can make money, right? I told y'all that the cars were already sold. They sold the original title to the DMV. Now y'all see how the DMV just got involved. So you can get locked into that contract. You see, everybody is a part of the fraud. So then the Alley Financials is going to sell CarMax. Well, hey, CarMax, so what you got as collateral because this title has already been sold. And it is owned by the DMV. Then CarMax is going to say, well, hey, I got Roger's legacy out here because you the only thing that can create some money because you are the only thing that can create a security. And she's going to co-sign for us because she's a investor into CarMax. <laughs> so then the bank will say, well, send me the paperwork and they're going to fund it. And they take so long with these car deals because they are waiting for the electronic check in which it is that they have printed in the back that has your name on it that is really sitting on a finance manager desk that you forgot to ask for. And they told you to sign the contract when you were really supposed to turn it over and endorse it like a check. <laughs> yeah, what, what was so crazy about that day was I had got a pre-approval for Capital One and they, they had me fill out an application ran my credit through Ally Global Services and all these other people when I already had a pre-approval through Capital One. So they just did what they wanted to do when I when I came up in there anyway. It didn't matter what my pre-approval was. It was going to slam me anyway. You didn't tell them, but do you know what a pre-approval is <laughs> to them? That wasn't an approval. Let me tell you, I right. used to pull, I'll buy a car. Before this process, or even now, <laughs> what you're supposed to do is make sure that your credit is good. And then you're going to go to your financial institution and you're going to tell them to get you a personal loan. Well, you need it for house repairs. <laughs> house repairs or whatever. Say something that's worth it. And then you take that personal loan and you turn around, you get a cashier's check. And then you take it into the car dealership. Now you ain't got no car notes, right? Then you turn around and you use the consumer laws on that personal loan. Now you own your car. But if you don't pay the personal loan, they not coming to take your car. They just going to put it on your credit. Y'all got to think smart and do things smart. <laughs> that is true. That is true. That's how you do that. Because guess what? You didn't tell them to only run it through Capital One. You have to direct them. You tell them you only run it through Capital One, but a pre-approval is nothing but a violation. If you were here when I pulled up the 10K, 8K form, what did I show y'all at the top under 17 CFR? Solicitation. That was a violation. They agreed that they wouldn't even do that, but they sent you a fake-ass pre-approval because Equifax then violated your Privacy Act of 1974 and your consumer rights to privacy by giving Capital One a snapshot because you did not opt out of pre-authorization approvals. Y'all can do that. Look it up. Opt out of pre-screened offers. So based off of the snapshot, they sent you a pre-approval. It was just a pre-approval. But that pre-approval was actually a approval, but mm -hmm. yeah. 
That's what it is. Unfortunately, I look, look forward to to the information from last week. So I definitely need to clean my credit up, get that utilize, utilization down. <laughs> get, yeah, get it was simply with the utilization, up. guys. With the utilization, the law says that a corporation cannot report transaction history. That's all you got to say. Based upon the consumer law. This company is not allowed to report transaction history. So what's considered transaction to them? Amounts. If it's late, if it ain't late, <clears throat> your utilization is now zero. Thank me later. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you. You're more than welcome. Well, guys, it is extremely late. 